Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We are on week 20 of cycle three, and we continue on with our science experiments doing probability. Um, so first of all, again, for my tutors, I want you to review what the definition of probability, again, we're doing the grammar of this um, field. And so definition of probability is the mathematical study of chance. And what is chance? Well, chance is just the likelihood that something might happen or might not happen. Um, and then you're going to review why we study probability. Um, based on our the guidance from our guide, we our curriculum, we study probability um, to help us understand God's world better and to learn a method for um, being able to decipher why some things could just happen or could not just happen. Um, and so it helps to plant some seeds that um, they'll develop again later in the dialectic stage of challenge. So last week we started with probability. Last week the um, beginning experiments we used had a very defined um, number of outcomes. So to again define probability, you have a desired outcome over your total outcomes. So last week we had like a coin, it had two sides. You only had two possible options as a total outcome. Your desired outcome as of heads was one out of two. Same thing with the red and black cards. You only have two options. As long as there's an even number of red and black cards, then it's gonna be red or black. So if you want a red card, it's one out of two possible outcomes. Same thing with the dice. You only had six possible outcomes when you roll the dice. Well, today we're building on that concept a little bit. Um, and each week's going to get just a little bit more complex. And so um, to start this theory, um, the beginning of our experiment, they talk about candy. Uh, we're using these like poker chips for our purposes. And so if I have one red, three white poker chips in my hand, and you want the red one, what is the probability that if I have this, you're gonna draw the red one? Well, our desired outcome is red out of our total possible outcomes, which is four. So we have one in four chance or probability of getting a red poker chip. Now you might say, well, there's only two colors, just like there's only two colors in the deck of cards. That's true, there's only two colors, but there is not an even number of um, possible outcomes. And so it gets a little more complex when you have not an even distribution of things like we did last week. So again, probability is desired outcome over total possible outcomes. So one out of four chips um, would be how you decipher that. So just kind of starting in with that to kind of get this concept of unequal or uneven um, distribution of possible outcomes. Um, so we reviewed the definition, we reviewed why we study probability. Um, you talk about a little bit more deeper understanding of how to acknowledge probability, again, total or desired outcome over total outcomes. And then we're going to introduce new grammar today called sampling. So um, a sample, the official definition would be a representative part of a statistical group whose properties are studied to gain information about the larger whole. So basically it's studying a small group um, or a portion of a group, um, trying to find information about a larger whole. So if we were to study plankton in the ocean, there's no way um, a marine biologist could study all the plankton in the ocean. So they might take a grouping um, and make probabilities based on that small group um, of plankton in a certain region of the world. Um, we, I would do some sampling questions in the classroom. So, okay, of our eight or nine kids, how many of you like chocolate ice cream? You know, raise your hand. Well, if four out of the eight like chocolate ice cream, 
you could make a, an assumption that possibly about half of the children um, in the same age group as them across the world or across our nation um, like chocolate ice cream. And so um, you could do a sample question of how many of you in this classroom have more than one sibling? Um, and again, so out of the eight kids, if only two out of the eight kids have more than one sibling, um, then you might make a, an assumption that two out of eight or one out of four kids in that age bracket have more than one sibling. Um, and so you start to get an idea of taking what a sample is. So today, um, we are going to do a sampling experiment. And to do this, we're using those poker tips and we're gonna put them in a lunch bag and then we're going to document our results. So we want to know in this bag, I have red, white, and blue chips. But I don't know exactly, I do, but for your purposes as a tutor and doing the experiment, you're gonna say, I don't know exactly how many of each we have, but I do know there is not an equal number of each. And so we're gonna take a sample. We have 100 chips total. We're gonna to take a sample. We're not gonna study all 100, but we're gonna do a sample to see if we can get statistically about the probability of each chip, of drawing each chip each time you do it. So to do this, you're gonna make a chart on your boards. I'm not giving you pre-printed because it's, um, it'll be better bigger. So you're gonna do this with your, your kids. Um, I'm gonna go through it a couple times because it's a little confusing looking at it in our curriculum guide, at least it was for me, and so you kind of walk through it. So out of my bag here, so this is what your chart's gonna look like. You're gonna have color in the first one, um, then you're gonna have white, blue, and red. And then on this side, you're going to write just the number of times you do it. I want you to go around the room, have each student draw a chip till you've done at least about 25 times, okay? So let's say I drew out a white, okay? So I'm gonna put white here, W for there. Now you kind of each row, you're gonna make kind of a results of each one. So of the white, I did one, I got one white out of one tries. Blue, I've gotten zero out of one try, and red, I've gotten zero out of one try. I'm gonna draw the next one. <laughs> red, all right, so I got red. So now with, I'm gonna put my R for red, and then white, I still got one, but now I have two tries. So I've gotten one out of two tries. Blue, I still have zero, but now I have two tries. So one out of two. Red, I now have one out of two. Okay, I'm gonna do another one. I get another red. Okay, so I put my red, my white, I still had the one from the first time, so I have one, but now it's out of three tries. The blue, poor blue here, zero out of three tries. And the red, now I have two out of three tries. And so you continue on each time, just counting how many you've gotten of that one. And then the bottom number is the total. So this is your desired outcome over your total outcomes on the bottom, or the total number of tries that you've done it. Um, and then you're gonna keep going for 25 tries. Now I have done this with this particular one. And just to give you an idea of what it might look like, and so you can see each time, you, I have the number of times that it was done over um, the total number. Um, so the, the top number is the desired outcome of that color, and then the bottom is the total number draws that we've done. By 25 draws, you should be pretty close to getting um, an estimated probability of how many are in each there, or what would be your likelihood probability of drawing that color. And so I did my white. I got to where I had um, a total of 
10 out of 25 were red draws. And so that gave me about a 40% um, times 100, 40 out of 100. It would estimate that's how many are in my bag. Blue, I had a total of four out of 25 draws. That's 16%, so 16 over 100. And then the red, 44%, and that's 44 over 100. The actual number that I had in there is pretty close. So blue, I had 20, um, and again, the results were 16 out of 100. Red, I had 40, and that was 40 out of 100. And white, I also had 40, and I had 44 out of 100. So doing the 25 tries was pretty close to the actual number of each color. Um, in your bag, tutors, you will have your little cheat sheet to know at the end to be able to compare your results to the actual number of each color in your bag. So kind of a summary of that, we are taking a sample, we're taking about a fourth of the total number of chips in here. And out of that sample, we are making a conclusion or a probability estimate about the whole group. We're saying based on our sample of 25 draws, there's about this percentage that you will get that color, um, or there's an estimated probability that there's about 40 out of 100 red or white or whatever. Um, so again, you're drawing a conclusion on the large group, the whole total, based on an experiment of, the, of a sample, of a smaller grouping of that. So then after you've done that, you know, explain this is how a sample can help us to make a conclusion about a larger group. Um, and then ask questions, how do you see have um, sampling happening in a real world? Um, have you ever been a part of a, an experiment or a questionnaire? Um, the census, um, which is trying to, you know, be as big of a sample as possible um, to get draw some conclusions based on areas. So how can sampling be helpful in our world or how can they think of it as working. All right, have fun.